behind the bar. My life is more than money and jewelry. My story's so crazy, dog. I said make a movie behind the bar. I went from playing sports to exotic whips. Ain't gotta tell me, dog. I know I'm the shit behind the bar. My life is more than money and jewelry. My story's so crazy, dog. I said make a movie behind the bar. I went from music exec to this podcast. Now I finally feel at home and left behind the bar. Yo, you are tuned in to Behind the Baller. I am your host, Ben Baller. We are doing it live from Las Vegas, from this motherfucking beautiful Wynn Salon Suite. This fucking view I'm looking at is so crazy. Sure, if you follow me on Instagram, you've been seeing the shit. Yo, we out here for my boy Paul's bachelor party, and I'm just going to freestyle off the top, you know what I'm saying, off the dome, man. Um, I got a lot going on. I'm overwhelmed. I'm hungover as a motherfucker. I feel crazy as shit right now. I ain't felt this crazy in years. Yo, man, I got here Friday. You know what I'm saying? Touchdown. And uh, straight to the hotel. Checked in. As soon as I checked into the room, took my little video. I popped up to Red 8. Red 8 is one of my favorite Chinese restaurants in here. Listen, man. You never want to compete against Steve Wynn. He just always does the best of the best. You know what I'm saying? Hire a chef from fucking real China. Got chefs from Shanghai up in there. And they just, food is off the chain. If you ever come here, try the chili and sea bass salt and pepper style. You will not regret it. It ain't cheap. It's expensive as fuck, especially for Chinese food. It's just crazy, but it's so fucking good. Had some of that. And then um, my boys got here. Paul brought all his homies, you know what I'm saying, from Virginia. Some homies came from Toronto. You know, we kicked a little bit. I gambled a little bit, did a little shopping, and then I hit. Uh, we hit Top Golf. I get to Top Golf with the homies. I have not swung a motherfucking golf club, and I just realized now, in almost thirty years, shit is terrible. Form is off. I can't even do a full swing around, right? But the gate stops at like two hundred yards. I was still hitting two hundred. Seen about four or five stupid, dumb, fucking idiots, stupid, dumb, straight, ignorant, dumb as fuck, stupid ass, fucking idiots, stupid, fucking dumb people who are dumb as fuck that were saying, oh, you were going against a fucking driver and an iron and blah, blah. Listen, you dumb ass, motherfucking, stupid ass bitches. We were doing both. I hit the iron too. I wasn't paying attention to what the fuck we were doing. You know what I mean? I was hitting the irons. We were doing drivers. You know, I had a three iron, six iron fucking driver. No one was hitting it with the wood. But anyways, going on. Everyone switched up. Um, a lot of the guys that were there, I'd say out of four of us out of the 10, no, I'm sorry, six of us out of 10 have played in the last year. Four of us out of 10 play at least every year. And then a few of us never hit a golf ball in a long time. And me, 30 years, it might as well be brand new again. But um, I got a homeboy named Jay, Korean cat. He's a golf pro. Um, he's, he's real dope. I've been wanting to fuck with them for a long time. And plus... George Lopez, my boy Schoolboy Q and all them, they've been asking me to come play with them for a minute. So I'm going to start fucking with them. And um, I had a lot of fun, dog. Food is good, man. Top Golf. I've been wanting to go to Top Golf for a long time. And I uh, can't wait to go back. But you know, Koreatown originated that shit. All over the country, period. Nobody had the driving ranges that were not inside of golf course before Koreatown. We originated that shit everywhere, period. It's just a popular thing. Koreans love that shit. Had it before anywhere else. And uh, I got to start hitting Aroma or somewhere. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But after that, we hit Crazy Horse 3. Shout out to my boy, Brandon Roke. Crazy Horse 3 is a strip club. And um, it's a bachelor party. You know what I'm saying? We out there acting a fool. And uh, yeah, my boy Paul's young. He's 27. He's getting married in a few weeks. And I've been trying to talk him out of it, not because I don't like, you know, his fiance or his wife to be, but just because dude is young, hasn't had enough life, and I just want him to experience things. And that's why this trip was what it was for. You know what I'm saying? I want him to have a good time, have some fun. Crazy Horse 3 is right across the street from the fucking new Raider Stadium. Raider Stadium is fucking retarded. It's just crazy. It shit looks amazing. It's ridiculous. And um, we didn't go that hard. I think we, um, I was drunk, you know, a little bit. You know, we got a we got what two balls in nineteen forty two at Top Golf, and then we got to Crazy Horse and got a ball of Jack Daniels and then a ball of Johnny Walker Black, and then uh, went home, had some food, went back to a hotel, had some food, we gambled a little bit. I think I lost like I don't know twelve hundred dollars, nothing really crazy, but it's it just don't like losing, you know what I mean? And then Saturday, wake up, 
and my body just started feeling feverish. It hurt, and I realized hitting fucking 60 swings on a fucking golf club when I haven't exercised, I hadn't done push-ups in two years, that shit fucked me up. I was hurting. I was I was in a lot of motherfucking pain. That shit was really fucked up. So, man, Saturday got up late. I woke up like 10 a.m. I had a fucking breathe right strip on my nose. You know what I mean? Was Had to get some fucking echinacea. Had to do an immunity shot. Order some room service. You know how I do. I'm not the king of room service like I used to be, but I definitely, you know, I'm, I'm the prince of it. And obviously, you know, I travel a lot. I live in a goddamn airplane. live in hotels. And uh, still managed to be a dad. You know, we got up, did a little shopping, checked out the new OVO store. My man Drake just had a brand new store open last week. And uh, the OVO store is inside the new Wynn Plaza suite shops. The new Wynn Plaza is actually beautiful. It's fucking gorgeous. You know what, man? At the end of the day, you know, I chose Aria for a while. And I think I just got to make the Wynn my hotel now again. It, the Wynn was my hotel for a long time. They are the first hotel that I know of that had a vegan menu for the room service. Not that I'm vegan, but, you know, it helps... You know, I'd like to eat them once in a while. And of course, the, the, the restaurants here are just too good. They open a Cipriani in the new Wynn Plaza shops. And it's just, they got this new shop called Feature. They got a fucking Visvum account, Rude. They sell Rude, my favorite brand, Rude. They got fucking Visvum. They got Mastermind. They got Just Don. They got a Nike account. They got a fucking Medicom Bear Brick account. The store is fucking so dope. Um, they about to reopen Hermes. They got an Hermes store by, by, by XS and... You know, we hit the pool. The Tower Suites has its own little private pool. That shit was dope. Then we hit the Fashion Show Mall. I got to check out my boy shop, Urban Necessities. He's a crep. You know what I'm saying? And I would say he's a crep ambassador. You know what I mean? By the way, if you don't know, Crep Protect is a sponsor of the Behind the Baller podcast. Shout out to my entire crep protect family, my presented by family, and now my collect family. Hit the mall, checked out a few things, had to get some clothes, had to grab some clothes for the night because we were going to turn up. You know, Saturday night, last night, was the reason why we actually came here. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, I used to be a big club guy. You obviously know I used to go out three, four nights a week. So I used to go out fucking five nights a week. And Vegas is a whole different level. And, you know, ever since the shooting, um, was it two Octobers ago or whatever, you know, business in Vegas has been down. It's been a lot more strict. When you go to a club, they wand you down. They fucking check you. They fucking, you know, they do the TSA full checkup. They don't play around anymore. You know, they want no incidents. And it's good. Keeps us safe. But uh, let me rewind back a little bit. We hit SW. The last time I was at SW was right before my man Q passed. Q world star, rest in peace. And, you know, like I said, when don't fuck around, Steve don't play around. Whether he's not here anymore or whatever the fuck the reason is, we hit SW, I don't need red meat, but my boys, I got them the tomahawk chop, cut them the ribeye, we had, I can't tell you how many, we got a 38 ounce steak, 48 ounce steak, another 36 ounce steak, and then I got the Kobe, real Kobe, not that bullshit 30% Kobe, 40%, I'm talking about the real Kobe, you know, $60 an ounce Kobe, got a four ounce Kobe steak for my man Paul, this is bachelor party, I wanna make sure he's good, and, uh, you know, we had a good meal. Paul thinks that, you know, he got new money. So he's like, oh, I ate here, here, and here. Man, shut the fuck up, Paul. And I always tell him that, you know what I mean? But he, um, he admitted after having his meal, said, yo, this is the best steak I've had in my life. And I'm like, yeah, SW don't fuck around. And on top of that, you can fuck around and spend $30,000 on wine in there. So we had an official meal. Go have a couple drinks. And it's time to go to excess. It's midnight. We pull in. I had surprised Paul. had some cutouts made. Cardboard cutouts, life size. You know, I posted some pictures of me and him, and a picture of him and, and, and his goddaughter, Kaya, my youngest daughter. And we go in there off top, six bottles off the start. Let me start by saying this everyone involved in the Win Night Life, I need to say thank you. My man, Ryan Jones, God bless you, bro. Thank you, homie. I appreciate what you did for me. And obviously, my crew and my boy, Paul. Congratulations on your new baby as well. Um, but again, thank you so much. Thank you to Cherie, my wife's one of her best friends. She connected me with Ryan. And uh, my man Jasmine, who I've known since he was promoting clubs in, in uh, Detroit, I met Jasmine through my boy Rob Kardashian. And Jasmine came over here. He started working with the Omni and Hakkasan group and all that. Then he jumped over to the win, and he's at 
you know, excess now. And he took care of me too. He blessed me on a whole different level. Jasmine, I love you, bro. You are really like me and you got some crazy inside history. And that's love, love. And excess was just lit. It was fucking, it, I have not had fun in a club in so long. And that was just fucking dope as fuck. It was fucking hilarious. There was this table, these Asian dudes and these Asian girls next to us. And they was turning up like a motherfucker. They was from Orange County. They was Vietnamese. Yo, their energy was incredible. I didn't fuck with nobody. It was weird. It was the first time I had to tell probably 15 people I didn't want to take a pic because I was drunk. And on top of that, if you guys know this, man, listen, man, I'm not really trying to take a picture with girls inside a casino or hotel that I'm staying at just because of security purposes. I don't want someone to come back and be like, oh yeah, Ben invited me to his room or blah, blah, whatever. It's a sad world we live in, but that's the reality of it. So if you don't get a picture with me inside a hotel, don't take offense by it. Even if I'm just there eating, I don't want to have that liability. I apologize. And I was drunk. Um, but the founder and CEO of, of Uber was there. He had a table, like two tables down from me. We had a beautiful stage table. Uh, we went there acting up. Um, got to finally hook up and connect with my man, Mo, Mo Shalizi. If you don't know, Mo is a really up and coming, powerful manager in the DJ world. He manages Alesso. He manages, um, I forgot what the fuck the dude's name is, but he manages Marshmallow, who's the biggest fucking DJ in the EDM world right now. Marshmallow's fucking huge. Listen, man, Mo, I'm so proud of you. I've been watching you from afar. I see what you've been doing from how when you first started and got your, your Lamborghini and where you are now, you've really starting to fucking build an empire and you know you you're on your way to being a mogul even though you are a mini mogul now um appreciate the love thank you for bringing me on stage man alesso did a dope job it was dope to hang out with marshmallow too chris man much love homie congrats on your success um it was a dope night you know it was a lot of good energy um i saw my man mike gunsberg out there he's one of my car agents and uh kind of squashed some beef with carter He's a big car dude. He's also kind of big in the in the car racing world now. He's kind of doing his thing. But I uh, had a good ass night. I was tilted, drunk as fuck. Had Rose, had Dom P, had Ace of Spades, had fucking um By the way, I drink a lot of champagnes, but people don't know. My favorite champagnes are first and foremost Moet Nectar Imperial Rose. It just tastes like fruit punch. Love that shit. And then there's a three-way tie after that. There's Perrier Jouet Rose. Dom P. Rosé, and then sometimes I like Cristal Rosé, but anyways, going on, I had uh, 1942, drank some Belvedere, had some Jack Daniels, I had some fucking Hennessy XO, I was out of my motherfucking mind, I was twisted, and um, thank God I was staying at the hotel, I decided to go back to the room, get some room service, and I went to bed at 6 a.m., I was fucking out of it, the shit was, woke up at like 11.45 or 12 o'clock, and I, my body hurt 10 times more, and mind you, I'm going to fucking Tokyo in three days. So this shit is motherfucking crazy. I just had a fucking just, ugh. And then I, you know, did my room service, got my smoothie, got my green juice, try to get right. Finally get my act together, kind of. Go downstairs, watch the Seahawks play. We get a motherfucking, we have a touchdown scored against us in the first minute of the game. I'm like, this is just not a good start. And then it just got too crazy in there. I see motherfuckers taking selfies from like four rows in front of me at the sports book. People asking for pictures, doing this. And I'm just like, yo, I'm hungover. I can't relax. And then I realized that the game is playing on the radio. I mean, on, on regular TV. So I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm going back to the room. Go back to the room and Paul's bitch ass is still asleep. So I wake his ass up. I feel like shit. I'm just like, fuck this. So around third quarter, we're just getting washed. And um, I'm like watching it i get to the end and i finally pass out I take like a two-hour nap i wake up feel a little better of course i hit red eight favorite chinese restaurant out here by the way my favorite restaurant in vegas though is lotus of siam and shout out to penny but it's just hard to get off the strip sometimes i don't really like getting in taxis ubers limos it's really not my thing i kind of like staying at resorts and staying there not leaving and everything's right here fashion shows across the street on course here pools lit food is crazy here so anyways, I got some food and um, I had some, you know, some egg noodles and some, you know, shrimp dumplings and um, I felt a lot better. And then uh, I started gambling and I won like 350 bucks. So I'm still down for the trip, but uh, I did a little shopping, went in the feature, copped a few things, man. Dudes is real cool. And then uh, my man DJ Homicide came through 
who is now known as Urban Sicko. And um, we're going to get into it in right now. Actually, we, fuck it. Let's get into it right now. I got the super exclusive. He should be up here in about 10 minutes. I'm going to start getting ready for my man, Homicide Craig. Me and him go back 30 years. This is my motherfucking guy. Just so you know, his Instagram name is Urban dot s-i-k-o urban sicko he's the new world star page he's the best page on the internet he's the best page on instagram that you might not have heard of and right now let's do the proper intro miles hit me with that lakey lake And now it's endorsement time from yours truly. Have you ever heard of GOAT? Well, if not, then you're fucking up. Especially to all my sneakerheads out there that are listening to my show. GOAT is the global destination for authentic sneakers. From new releases to rare finds. GOAT.com is the safest way to buy and sell authentic sneakers online. They have thousands of styles from the past and present. Even shoes that aren't released yet. All are guaranteed authentic by GOAT. I just got a pair of black cement Jordan 3s and they're fresh as fuck. From Yeezys to Jordan to even Gucci. GOAT gives you access to everything you're looking for. They only work with trusted sellers and before any shoe is sold, every detail is inspected. From the stitching and the color to the size and weight, GOAT ensures every shoe matches exact factory specs. With over 15 million users around the world buying and selling verified shoes every day at GOAT, you'll find exactly what you want at the best price possible. Find the perfect 100% authentic sneaker at GOAT.com slash baller. Plus, you'll also be supporting our show. But you've got to go right now before the sneakers that you want are gone. Go to GOAT.com slash baller. Spelled G-O-A-T dot com slash baller. Baller. Yo, man, so you are listening to Behind the Baller, Las Vegas edition, OG edition. I got a special guest. He ain't just, just special. This motherfucker is 30-year homie of mine, L.A. native. All day. Motherfucking black as motherfucking a church shoe. This motherfucker <laughs> blacker than a Bible cover. My man, DJ Homicide. What's good, bro? What's good, my man? Well, you know what? I'm sorry. Let me... Let me switch that up. He's known as Urban Psycho now. S I K O. Urban Sicko. Urban Sicko. My bad. Sick you know what? motherfucker. Hold on. The crazy part is I've been calling him DJ Homicide for decades, right? Right. Let's get right into it. What made you decide to change the thing to Sicko? Because you went to Craig Anthony and then went to. Yeah, I mean, uh, Homicide's had a, a lot of issues business wise. You know, a lot of people can't fuck with the name for business. You know what I mean? Like, even in Vegas. They can't put it on the marquees. It's been a hindrance, uh, you know, for business. So, uh, I hate that, but go on. Yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so uh, I put my real name on my IG, Craig Anthony. And then, you know me, I've been a clown my whole fucking life. Yeah. So I just started putting up a bunch of crazy shit, shit that I thought was funny. I just I was just sharing shit with people. And uh, then that page started getting kind of out of hand. So I was like, the shit that I was posting was so fucking over the top that I had to take my real name off. I just felt I needed to take my real name off this shit. Right. And I was like, let me create something. Let me create a character for this shit. And it's basically a character of me, but it's on times 10. So I just called him Urban Sicko. And I just put my little emoji up and then the page just started popping. Motherfuckers start fucking with me. Uh, you start fucking with it like in a different way. And uh, shit start really moving. Now we up almost at a million followers, you know what I'm saying? So this shit's popping. You know, a lot of people, you know, it's... The report button, which is AKA the snitch button, is such a punk ass button. It's just this era that we're in right now. It's just some like, just because like, okay, let's say it does offend somebody, but bro, why? Like, why I, even follow? You know what I'm saying? Listen, but I never reported anybody's page in my life for what? Like, even if it was like someone was like, oh, you a chink, you a goon, fuck you, you know what I'm saying? You a fucking whatever. Like, bro, no. All day. Like, for report, I'll just block a motherfucker, you know what I mean? We like, just from a different era though, man. Like, we don't really fuck with shit like that. Like, we need to square with somebody and be like, yo, what's good? Like, what's the issue? Or we just get rid of the motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? So, right. One thing I, I love about you, but at the same time I don't like about you, is that when you have the accolades, the resume you have, right. 
and you don't let people know on, on like at least a periodical basis, like two times a year, three times a year, it just bothers me because I don't want people to give you the same respect that I give you. Yeah. And if people respect me because of what I've been doing, and then I've been like I've been doing a lot of throwback episodes. Um episode or two episodes ago, I did a throwback. I did my K Town Hustler series from ninety five to two thousand five. In that decade I covered, um, I talked about you a little bit. I covered from Dr. Dre, Pac, Aftermath Entertainment, Priority Records, Jay Z, your music um, years, DJing, yeah, yeah. Air Max crew a little bit, um, making a million dollars selling my sneakers. You know, you being the first cat to have a Ferrari, be balling, blah blah, whatever, having a you know mansion, and like I didn't elaborate on it. So let's take it back. Let's do it. Okay. So you from Pasadena, Pasadena real Cal OG, Pasadena, California. John Muir. Yep. If motherfuckers don't know, listen. I, I'm gonna just say this real quick because you guys always ask about my basketball past, right? And when I was in high school, there's two leagues, three leagues you could do at the time. All right. There's obviously the high school that you play in, right? Whether you're Division One, Two, Three, or Four, whatever. That's CIF. That's California. Okay. When you're not playing that. You either play AAU, which is the national level where McDonald's All Americans play, or you, there was this thing back then called Slam and Jam. Okay, so I was a part of Slam and Jam, and I remember for the first time it was a West LA thing. So it was like Beverly Hills, West LA, and it was it was some G's. You know, we had shit half my team, or no, sixty percent of my team was black. You know, and then some white boys. That's what it was in the eighties, and we were playing against the school. We were playing against uh, the YMCA Slam and Jam in Pasadena, and I remember. Never forget this dude, Brian Reed. He was like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. He had the build of like Charles Barkley. He wasn't like like fit, six-pack, dark as fuck, talk shit. He was a clown, just like, like Homicide. Every time we got on the bus, he started rapping. And all of a sudden, we thought we were going to Pasadena to play some like Rose Bowl, like some white boys, nah. right? <laughs> so we make a left turn somewhere. I don't know where the fuck we made a left turn, but as soon as we made a left turn, we saw black folks wearing shower caps. Shit got real, real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And everyone stopped on the bus and stopped rapping. And I remember my boy Donovan turned around. And he was like, hey, I think we about to play some. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You we know what I mean? some, he's about, and you already know. So. We're about to play some N-words. Yeah. So, bro, we get to the Pasadena YMCA. It might have been Altadena Pasadena uh, YMCA. Yeah, it's probably up there. We get in there. And, bro. She was hood, the right? The motherfucking referee had a curl. Yeah. He had a straight curl. Dripping. So I was like, oh shit. Then next thing you know, the tip off happens. First play, motherfucker do a 360 dunk. And I'm like, oh bro, what the fuck is going on here? Motherfuckers gang banging yeah. in, the, in the stands yeah. and shit. Jacques Vaughn was there, you know what I'm yeah. saying, playing on this. Stacey Augman and all so that. So break it down. Pasadena. Please let people know how, how real shit was. See, uh, what people didn't know about Pasadena, I feel like Pasadena gave me literally all of my swagger, bro. Like, uh, it was um, the, the side of the, the side of the city that I went to school on was the west side. So I went to John Muir. John Muir is a eighty percent black. You know what I'm saying? So we had everything from Crips to Bloods to Essays to you know whatever, whatever. And back then in the eighties, late eighties, it was just really connected to fucking L. A. Like it was yeah. like the next city right outside the city. And um, dude, we was always in L. A. We used to ride the bus to a World on Wheels from school. So we was always in L.A. and everybody's family was related. But, you know, back then, gangbanging was so big. You know what I'm saying? My family was really connected. You know, my, my cousins was selling dope with the big dudes. I don't want to get into their names, but, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I grew up around a lot of that shit, man. And, um, you know, like my cousins had the fucking blazers with the Daytons and shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? All that real shit. And I just grew up around that culture. So it was like, you know, I grew up going to World on Wheels and all that shit. So Skateland, all that Skate shit. Skateland, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Cartoon. We always talk about Skateland when, I, when I see him. Mr. Cartoon did all our ink. Shout out to that cat. But a lot of people don't know that there's a real serious urban side in Pasadena, you know. And there's actually a project out there. They call it The Manners. And uh, it's all right, right on Fair Oaks in Washington. So, you know, a lot of people don't really understand that. So, I mean, I got a lot of my street edge from living out there. And, uh... You know, it's just, it's just some real L.A. shit. You know, we grew up wearing Dickies and motherfucking T-shirts, ditching school, going to Slauson Swap Meet, running for motherfucking Crips and shit down the fucking... Hold on, You hold know on, what I'm saying? On, like, I mean, on. that's what we was doing. You Do know? you remember in 2002, we drove the... the, the your, your, your Was it Yukon, right? Yeah, yeah Yukon. We drove your Yukon. No, dog, this is your Denali. This is 2002, bro. Oh, the black the, one. Yeah. We drove the Denali. 22s. Down Slauson. We was going over hill, hit Slauson, 
And you remember we saw a school bus? He was scrapping on a school bus. Yeah. I was like, what, what are the chances of passing the school bus and seeing them fight right there, right by, right, right by Nipsey Hood? That's one of the things I really love about my relationship with you is me and you got a, a real deep connection to Los Angeles and the streets of Los Angeles. And not necessarily on some like thug shit, but just the culture. Like me and you are some of the most LA motherfuckers ever. Straight up. And it's not like, we're not talking about like the fake LA time. We're talking about like, you know what I'm saying? The real culture of the city. from Everything from the, our tattoos, our cartoon, you know what I'm saying? Our cars. We had the same cars with the same wheels. Hip-hop. Hip-hop. West Coast. DJing. Shit like that. I mean, it's, it's just deeper than that. You know what I'm saying? From the Lakers to the Dodgers. Like, me and you do everything all L.A. heavy. And uh, we've always been those dudes. So that's one of my favorite parts because, like, me and you, like, motherfuckers don't really know how me and you talk to each other. Like, we talk to oh, each man. other, like, so, <laughs> so out of bounds, bro. Like... If motherfuckers could see how me and him are texts, it, 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 it don't translate we, to today. Like we, it's so, we, we would be canceled. Yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> it's so on PC, bro. Like, man, I can't even get into the shit we be saying to so, each other. So. But that's how, that's the nature. That's some brother shit. Like, Ben's like my sibling like brother. Like, he's not my homie. He's like my brother. So, you know, that's how we roll. But, you know. It, I mean, just let people know how, how serious he's talking right now. Like, Craig has always been weird about it because once his success happened and he started making millions, even 10 times more people was trying to hit him up because he was a dude in a white group, right. you know, coming up. So people were trying to come and fuck with him, but he wasn't fuck with nobody because that's, you know, you got to put out the defense mechanism and to bring up the relationship. And this is when you know it's real. Rest in peace, you know, Craig Bullock. Rest in peace, Pops. I was a pallbearer. Right. I carried his dad's, you know, same casket. So that's a serious thing. And like, you know, I miss his Pops. And like, yep. that would let you know, like, you could have some other shit. Fuck if, you know, I mean, I've always followed yeah. him on social media, but yeah, if you I don't, whatever, that. this is something deeper because, you know, I carried Pops, you know what I'm saying, into the grave and, you know, Raiders jersey and all inside the casket and everything, you know, but like. Yeah, people don't even know that. I use a pallbearer at my dad's funeral and shit, so. Yeah. Uh, that should just explain the whole relationship to everybody. That right, right there, there should just say. That just says the yeah. whole shit. You know, this motherfucker right here was eating fried chicken <laughs> at my house with a white t-shirt on and, and a Dickies. With my dad, like on Sundays, watching the football, yeah. you know, I'm like, that's how family it was. But, you know, you got into, you talking about, you know, the money that I made, all that shit came from Sugar Ray, you know. And what thing was cool about that was I just wanted to be different. You know what I mean? I wanted to step out of the circle. And we was all trying to be hip-hop motherfuckers and shit. And I just had a chance to do something different. And, man, so dope. And, uh, you know, they, they came to me and it's like, hey, man, my guy Paul Pontius, uh, he was a uh, A&R at uh, Immortal Records. Yeah, you know they had Everlast. Shout out to the big homie Everlast. Yeah. All those motherfuckers. They had all that shit. And um, I remember all them. I remember the Adrian Miller days and all that shit. Right. So we just he he straight up told me because Paul Pontius, my guy, who put me in Sugar Ray. Right. He signed Corn and Incubus. So he was a real cat back in the days. Like yeah. he was doing big things. And he was like, he came up to me and said, "Craig, you want to make some money off some white boy?" And I looked at him. I said, "Hell, fucking yeah!" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I was living on my homie's couch. And I got in there and I reverse engineered like rock and hip hop and started putting beats in the shit and boom, next thing you know, some platinum hit records. But there was a few people, and I say few, there's less than four that I could think of. I forgot what this one there was this crazy all black band. I forgot what the fuck their name was, man. They were hardcore. Uh, and they had a DJ in the group. They oh, had, all black band with a DJ in the group. Yeah. Damn. I don't remember who that is. Because after y'all did everything else, whatever, I jumped in the snot. Yeah, and I was one of the rare few DJs I was in Snot, and then I remember Head P had one. I mean, Incubus had Incubus fucking had, uh, one. had had Kilmore and everything. Shout out to my boy Chris Kilmore. And what's crazy is Lethal actually did some of the work with my Sugar bad, Ray. my bad. L just so you know, guys, Lethal is one of the first OG DJs from House of Pain, from Limp Bizkit. He's super OG Fairfax. Went to Beverly as well. Same shit as Old me. Real Fairfax. My boy who taught me how to DJ. The guy who put the records, the DJ, the turntables in my hands, the records in my hands, 1982, is the same guy who taught Leo or Lethal how to DJ, and that's my man DJ Rob One. Rest in peace, Rob One. Rob. But go on, I'm sorry. So, so Paul Pontius. So, so Paul Pontius, he put me in the band, but Lethal, uh, the homie, he was the first dude to really work with Sugar Ray. He was producing with them first, right? And uh, you know, he was in he was in the House of Pain, so he was doing his thing. So he, the, the band was like, we need a we need a DJ to recreate those elements. So they hit me up and I was hired at first. You know, I went to Europe. We went to Europe for two years straight. I lived in Europe pretty much for two years with the band. We didn't have shit popping and we came back and uh, they didn't really know I made beats. So when we came back, I just set up. We was on, on McCadden over there. Uh, Damn, McCadden place. McCadden. Um, I, California I Chicken Cafe. Man, that whole side of town. So LA, man. Um, 
We all lived in the same house. I don't give a fuck if Car and get mad. She used to do the laundry at that laundromat and that <laughs> She used to do Mark's. She used to wash Mark's drawers and that all motherfucker. All day, dude. Crispy like a motherfucker. But um, Mark McGrath, fuck you if you're listening. Yo, what was the name of that side of the town, man? I forgot. Uh, uh, McCadden. But McCadden right there is like it's Melrose and McCadden. It's kind of like it's almost Hancock Park. It is and, Hancock Park. And it's kind of like it's like Southeast Hollywood. But yeah, right. no, I get it. It's like Hancock Park adjacent. Yeah. So you know, we got in it. We had a lot of success, dude. We sold 16 million records. We toured the world. You know, I was in the band for like 16 years. You know what I'm saying? We did our thing. Made a lot of money. Got a lot of. They platinum. call them the M word with the E R. Got many a lot times. of platinums. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing with you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, my story's pretty interesting, though, man. It's never really been told. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, Ben has the issue with me because I've never been a bragging type. I've always been a kind of like. Y'all see what I'm doing, like let it roll. But he he has a good point where you got to let motherfuckers know who you are. You know what I'm saying? I'll agree with you on that aspect. You know, it's like that's what I'm about to do from here on out. You know, there's no more nice guy. You know what I'm saying? It's not like yeah. I'm a nice guy, but. I mean, I'm reintroducing never, my, yeah. my old school as well. I have yeah, to for the marketing you know, level, for, for the Asian kids. Listen, bro, Blacks has been on, and yeah. I know they're still, they're still taking over, the, but there's still a long way to go, right? right. But while it's there. Why not inspire another dude from Dina or another dude from fucking Compton? It don't yeah, matter where it is. No, Be like, yo, no doubt, no doubt. How many black folks is working in the right band? But it's just not like that. I mean, yeah. Yeah, they're still doing. But what I'm saying is, what still to this day, never been done something like that at all. No, period. no, no. And like I said, you know, and I, I think about it every time when I get a publishing check from something I did 20 years ago. You know, what I'm saying it's like, this goes out to anybody. You know, if there's something you're doing and you really believe in it, and it's not on no cliche shit, but. You know, don't worry about what's cool and what's not cool. Like, just do what the fuck you think is cool to you. And that's and you push that on other people and your energy becomes their energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never give a fuck about what anybody is doing. I always do what I want to do or what I think is cool. And for me, luckily, that's worked out. But I, I just like being original. I don't like dick riding or hip hopping on shit like that. So if that's what me and him is about. We just from a different era where. We just ourselves, dude, the way we talk, it's like the way we think, it's like we ain't worried about what other people think. Like, we don't give a fuck. Like, we just do us. And luckily for me and him, it's worked out to where we've had a lot of success. But my shit to you guys is just be yourself, man. Just do your thing. Because you might be cooler being the weirdo than being like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Because Ben's always been a weirdo. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers hit me all the time like, what's up with your boy? I'm like, that's what makes him who he is though, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, he's got that it factor. You know, even Miles, you know, Miles is always talking about you, bro. Ben's so funny, you know, and I'm like, you have no idea. I was like, you know what I'm saying? I was talking because my mom, you know, me and you, one thing that me and Ben do is we collect uh, bear bricks. You know, we some of the I mean, are we pretty much the OGs with like actually collecting them like on a mass scale? And uh, I told my mom because I just got a recent collection. I started collecting again like uh, the bare bricks, one thousand percent only. You know what I'm saying? The best ones they have. And uh, I got about thirty, thirty three bears right now. And That's my, a lot. And my mom was like, "Yo, you're fucking insane for this shit. This shit is taking up like the whole upstairs of your house, Craig. Like, what the fuck is this shit?" And I was like, "That's funny. That's cool." But this motherfucker Ben got like 71 of them motherfuckers. I was like, he's he's got double what I got in in less of the time than I, I got him. And uh that's just what he does. Like he, he he takes shit and he means well with it, but he just takes it to another level. Everything he does goes to another level. And that's what I love about my guy. It's just like he just kills it. Everything he touches, he fucking destroys it. You know what I'm saying? Every day, bro, I'm at the crib and I see you doing some new shit. Like, I'm so proud of you, bro. I got you, bro. though, bro. Thank you, man. I'm seeing, like, some jewelry with this dude and some appearance here, some award here, and some new deal here, and some shit in Dubai. Then he's in London. It's like, when do you go to sleep, bro? Man. You know, taking care Three of a, a whole family. You know what I'm saying? It's like his family's just living a beautiful life. But the crazy part is I didn't even get involved. Like, right. Craig, Craig, when Craig started getting his white boy money, <laughs> when he got white boy money, he has the first. He was the first dude I knew had an accountant, like really right. had a legit accountant. Yeah. People handling this, like handling the business, this, that, whatever. I didn't get all that shit until recently, you yeah. know. But of course, I have it to a different level now. Yeah, now you do agencies that. and stuff. But going back real quick, what year did you start getting nasty with the turntables? So I started DJing in 1984, and um, man, I'm so glad we get into this shit. Let's get into this. So yeah. Uh, you know, me and you are from Los Angeles. So one of the biggest radio stations that was influential to all of us was KDAY, uh, AM Stereo, 1580. Uh, DJs like Joe Cooley. Uh, Tony G. Tony G, the godfather of Los Angeles DJs straight up. Uh, M-Walk, uh, Trey Ski, 
Like all these old school LA DJs, Channel Joe, Jeff, Joe Cooley. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So we used to listen to those dudes on the radio at night. And in '84, those dudes really influenced me. Like I was just, I just wanted to be one of those dudes. Even so, Dr. Dre, DJ. Dr. Dre Fuck, was, on, yeah, man. Dr. Dre was on there, dude. I still got all his rhodium mixes. We both do. You know, I got Dr. Dre like doing turntable shit. So. Um, at that point, I was just like, this is what I want to do with my life, bro. And I just started DJing. I was like 13 back then. And, uh, you know, my mom bought me one turntable. My mom never really had a lot of money. She was a teacher. She was like, I'll buy you one turntable for Christmas, and I'll get you the next one next Christmas. That's a whole year later, bro. Damn, bro. So I linked up with another cat in Pasadena, one of my other broke-ass homies, and me and him figured out a way to get a mixer, and that was Slep Rock. Slep Rock was like, yo, yeah. my mom gonna buy me a mixer. Why don't you put the turntable with my mixer and then we gotta, we gotta set up. Me and him sat on my fucking floor in Pasadena and DJ with one turntable and a mixer for a year. I waited that whole year to get that other turntable, bro. So then I got that second turntable and then I just started, I started doing DJ contests. You know what I'm saying? I, I like a local DJ contest. I was in a Superman contest with Rock Raider and all them shit. Oh, shit, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, I had a bad time in that shit because... I bought some cases for my turntables, you know, the traveling cases yeah, they have those. But I was I was stupid. I didn't know how they really work. So I I didn't pack any plastic on top of my turntables, the covers, and oh. it smashed my turntable arms. So when I got to New York, all my shit was fucked up. I didn't have no money. And I got in this contest and I had these broke arms and like Cuber, all them motherfuckers, Rock Raider, uh, Rob Swift, all those dudes, like the OG X. Mixed Master Mike. All those LG dudes was like, yo, dude, you was killing it until your arms fucking start tripping. So blah, blah, blah. That was like a a lot of adversity for me because I was really good. You know what I mean? Like to tell y'all where I got my DJ name, Homicide came from me winning DJ contests. Every contest I got in, I won. So the homies was like, damn, you be killing it, dog. Like you a fucking homicidal motherfucker on the turntables. And they just started calling me Homicide. I don't believe you should ever name yourself. I believe your name should be given to you. So 100%. Yo, listen, man. You know what I'm saying? Ben Baller was given to me in 1992. Absolutely. So I hear you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So... You know, from there, uh, I just started DJing, and um, in my era, I, the DJs were really complete. Like, DJs made beats, they DJ clubs, they DJ radio, and shout out to the Baker Boys, uh, Eric V and Nick V, because they put me on the radio in 92 on Friday Night Flavors. And, and yo, yo, real quick, man, rest in peace, Frank V, because that motherfucker was absolutely seriously miraculous, you know what I'm saying? Frank Vidal, man, God bless you, rest in peace for servicing me, servicing AM, rest in peace, and... uh going back man baker boys much love all Go day back. so shout out to all those dudes that's family all those dudes are family for life and um you know the dj and dude like i'm really lucky man like to you know obviously you know ben you know all the big djs out here you know all the way from the marshmallows to the calvin harris's and, and they're on a whole nother level but aoki diplo all, all them, those yeah. cats um but djing has been very profitable for me man it's afforded me an amazing lifestyle it's got me in all kinds of shit it's got me a name in hollywood got me a name in music you know, I, it got me into producing, and um, you know, this was really crazy. You know, what I'm saying, I, you know, I'm not getting into all this shit while I'm not in Sugar Ray anymore. But l recently, I hooked up with Rodney, the guitar player. Yeah, yeah. And we made another hit record. I have no doubt that it's another hit record. Nice. Like, it, we, we, me and him is just magical. You know, the, me and him, when we got together, we made all the magical records. So. You know, um, it's just cool, man. It's just cool. Like things come full circle. Uh, I just moved to Vegas right now. That's where we we sit in this lavish ass twenty five thousand. <laughs> it looks like a twenty five thousand dollar room, bro. I mean, like we overlooking the whole city. Shit is gorgeous. Yeah, no, I, it's just how you do it, right? You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, but you know, I I, I go hard, right? No, so, you know, so the thing about is dope about you going hard is it sets a bar. Like the motherfuckers around you got to go like you you do. It's the same thing as a competition or a sport or something. It's like when you go that hard, if the next dude ain't going that hard, he's not going to see you. He's yeah. not going to be on your level. He can't see what you're trying to do. So that's what I love about this dude right here, man. Like he's a special cat. And he's really – what people don't really know about Ben Baller is he's the downest motherfucker I really know. I know like if anything happens, he's one of the first dudes I can call like straight up. And I'm never going to call him because I don't need to. <laughs> but, you know, he's – He's, likewise, he's one feel. of the most solid motherfuckers I ever met, man. Like he can get crazy and get funny. He can do all this shit and do this, but blah, blah, blah. When shit gets real, or even when he got some real shit, he comes to me, I go to him. Like, that's what kind of relationship we got. Like, I might not see him all the time, but it's on site. It's like, boom. 
yo, what you doing, man? Yo, keep it real with me with this shit. That's, you know what I mean? Like, that's the first thing he says to me. Like, hey, keep it real, dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the intro of pretty much 50, 60% of our conversations is, yo, keep it real. Like, yeah. what would you do right here? Like, yo, he'll show me something or he'll send me something or talk about some business shit or just like, you know, and that's the nature of our relationship. So I would, I would say to you, man, like, when you find some good people, man, in your circle, stick with your people, man, ride out with them and try to get to the top with them because that's, that's what we about, you know what I'm saying? Like, and one, one of the rare things about a friendship, talking to all, the, all everyone who's listening, listen, man, it's always, let's say you have homies, five, four homies in your crew, 10, three, it's always going to be hard to find someone who's doing financially well enough to do what you do or whatever. Right. So like one thing with Craig, with me is, I know if we travel somewhere, I ain't got to worry. Like yeah. we ain't got to share no room. We ain't got to worry about, oh, well, let, well let, let's go eat at uh, P.F. Chang's tonight. Nah, bro. Like, we, we just go do what we got to do. Yeah, we going to do what we got to do. And, and, and it's good. And it's like, or he hold me down. I hold him down. Same thing, whatever. Like, tell you the truth. When bottle service started really starting in L.A., like really for real, on my birthday. And this is when 50 Cent was popping the fucking uh, up in the club. <laughs> oh, shit. This is like, crazy. Craig took me to, to, to Joseph's. I used to DJ at Joseph's, but it was like pop and Ren Bolt House night. And he got me a bottle of Hennessy and, and some other shit. He paid for it. And like, this was when like people wasn't even, it was unheard of to kind of drop that kind of money. It's like today now, it'd be equivalent to you dropping money on a fucking, on a Jeroboam of Ace. Like, you know, the triple quadruple magnum. Like it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't heard of. And he did it. And I know like. You know, it's one of my favorite things that we used to do though. It's like, you know, me and you have always been in the car game. And me and him would just drive each other's cars. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I, we would just give each other our cars. Like, nobody gave a fuck, man. It's like, yo, man, take the Ferrari, man. Take the Beamer, man. Take the truck, man. Like, and he could have it for a, a month and I wouldn't give a fuck. You know, take the Lamborghini. You know, yeah. we was driving each other's. He, when, he, when he got his uh, his last, not his last Ferrari, but maybe like three or four Ferraris to go. Yeah. And he came he came to my house. I was one of the first motherfuckers. He pulls up. He's like, yo, man, you got to drive this shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the kind of shit we on. Like, I love that shit. Like, we just, he's like, yo, you got to drive this shit, man. Like, we driving down Colorado and shit. He's like, yeah. he's like hey, man, this motherfucker smooth, bro. Yeah. <laughs> this shit's smooth. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. We going around corners going to fucking 85 miles an hour and shit. And it's like, you Listen, know, and Joe Cooley on the Rodney Owen shit on the radio, like so. Fast forward, you know, like you know, all our mid our mid mid level years. Uh, I first really started realizing uh, what Ben was was a genius at was marketing in the Nike Talk years. Yeah, once you got on Nike Talk, dude, that's when you start getting big. Like for everybody that doesn't know, and I'm sure he's gotten into it, we had a sneaker collecting crew called the Air Mac Crew. Me, Ben Baller, DJ AM. We had probably. Between the three of us, probably 3,000 pairs no, of sneakers. No, more than that, dog. Probably more than that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wasn't keeping track. And no, but we was in the 5,000 level, bro. Right. Towards the peak. Right. Yeah. And this one, it wasn't cool. Like, it was, I mean, who was collecting sneakers? It was like Clark Kent. Uh, M's. M's. Air Rev. Air Rev. And then, obviously, it was a lot of kids on Nike Talk. I won't disrespect and say there wasn't. But we were just like, we made it something different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we took it to a whole nother level, dude. And we made like a gang of that shit. It was like East Coast versus West Coast. Like we would battle Air Rev and them from coast yeah. to coast on eBay, snatching like the people rarest from kicks. Ja people from Japan would come in and try to yeah, battle us. And you know what I'm saying? London. Yeah. And to me, that's the core essence of hip hop. It ain't about just music. It's like battling shit. Like, and we were competitive with within but each it was other. A, people don't realize sneaker collecting came from it originated and derived from hip hop. Right. The whole culture. Yep. So like when you think about DJ, because we were all DJs, we collected. The only thing they didn't do that I was like, you know, because like I used to break dance, I used to graffiti write, whatever. But on every element, if Homicide needed to rap, he could. Believe it or not, if DJ Am had to rap, he would. Yeah. Am used to rap a lot, so people didn't know that either. But going on, that culture that we had had created, and we also elevated, and we also evolved from. It helped me into like put it this way, man. For all you guys listening to the music right now and you hear the Serato shit and you hear this, and even though Craig might have CDJs now and not go with the fucking vinyl, 1200s, whatever, let me, let me be real, man. When it came down to really who can scratch, who could do certain things, there's very few people, and don't get me wrong, Qbert is a friend of mine. He does some amazing scratching, but it's a very technical, advanced way of scratching. Right. And I'm sure he could scratch just like Rock Raider or like Premiere or like Homicide, but... To him, 
that's not his thing. But what I'm getting at is a lot of people can't. There's a certain sound when you hear someone scratch, like, wait a second, whoa, what the fuck? It's all rhythm, it's all flow, and it's all it's all, it's like a it's like a guitar player solo, yeah. you know? It's no, like it, is. it comes from your soul. You can hear a guitar like when you hear John Mayer play the guitar and be like, Oh, pretty motherfucker. No dog, he's one of the twentieth best living, you know, in, in the world. Millions of people play the guitar. What I'm trying to get at is you can get real caught up on somebody's image because Homicide's image was all real. He only had real motherfuckers with him. He always had, he came from, you know, he came from, from nothing. AM came from nothing, but at the same time, he was running Hollywood people, so blah, blah, and he was dope, so that was a perfect thing. What I'm trying to get at and why I'm bringing this off the wall, sideways shit from nowhere is for the longest time, if you only watched the TV show Fresh Prince of Bel Air, you would never know that Jazzy Jeff would fucking serve you worse than you right. ever, ever would want to. And the crazy part was, I already fuck with dude because I fuck with DJ Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince when their records were good, like Brand New Funk and all the hip, original hip hop shit. And you think of Will Smith as an actor. Listen, him being an actor, cool, whatever. But I remember one time, Homicide brought out like an old, like a newer tape. This was like 2003. Yeah. And I was like, yo, Jeff is scratching like that? Yeah. Like this motherfucker's nasty. That part of the game I need people to always remember. And it's important that I talk about it. It's important that Homicide talks about it. Yeah. And it's important that OGs talk about it. So you guys who are younger, who are 16 to 30 years old, I want you to remember, go out and listen to some older music, man. Understand why certain things sound the way they do now. Yeah, a lot of people don't sample music anymore because they don't want to give up their royalties or pay these sample fees or certain things. Right. But understand where it came from because hip hop right now, I'm not going to say it's whack. It's just it's getting just to different. a point. It's different. It's getting bigger. And, 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 and I'm, I'm not fucking with it as much. But Craig, a.k.a. Homicide, a.k.a. Urban Sicko, now he's always evolved. And sometimes he's a little too far. Yeah. And I'll see things that he had an idea for. And I'm like, damn, Craig, you was on that seven years ago. Okay, well, cool. So... Even like playing trap in Los Angeles, like trap records. Like yeah. I was doing that. How two about Dipset? You brought Dipset to LA. Right. Like all that shit is like, like you said, dude, sometimes I'm too ahead of the curve and it, it can be a problem. But so one thing that, that I like about you too, that you do is from what I was talking about with the shoe shit is the marketing, like the self marketing. Yeah. And that's going to, what I'm going to lead into your social media. So Ben started all this shit before, you know, as social media grew, he evolved and grew with it. And, you know, it started off with the Nike talk shit. And this is before MySpace and all that shit really got popping. And we would just be on there battling kids, going off like he's never held his tongue. Like he used to go <laughs> at anybody who said anything about our sneakers back then. You know what I'm saying? He'd be like, oh yeah, motherfucker. And he would just dump like 10K of shoes on, on and pictures on Nike talk. But, you know, so then comes, uh, then comes the next wave, which is Facebook, MySpace. He was killing it on there. He started, you know, he just started interjecting all of this shit. And then, like, people would just be like, yo, like, your dude is like a genius at marketing. And I was like, he really is, man. Like, he's doing this shit by himself. He's the most self-made motherfucker I ever met. Like, he has literally made every penny, every relationship by hand, by, by walking up to people, shaking their hand, talking to them, doing something with them, collaborating with them doing work with him build a relationship yeah like his shit is so official man and it's like it's deep rooted and it's long and it's 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 something that you guys got to understand and something you should do is like personal relationships are very important you know meet your peoples talk to them keep it real with them people fuck with ben because he just he's just honest with them like yo man i don't know man i don't think that's really gonna pop craig like i don't i don't think that's really hitting right now you know what i'm saying and he'll talk to anybody he'll talk to me the same way he talked to some dude on the street so I'm just saying, man, y'all people got being fake, it don't really don't get you nowhere no more, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's not how we feel. So he's taking that shit now. Now his Instagram and all his social media is just on a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? It's not necessarily about followers. It's about reach and it's about who's fucking with him. Yeah. And his shit's on another level right now, man. And it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know me, bro, you and you got into it earlier. You know, I've been I'm not gonna say I'm modest, but I just really never gave a fuck about being famous. Like I had money, so I didn't give a fuck. I never really cared about popping off on social media. But the last year or so Now it's time to care, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> ben was like, yo, man, people just really don't like, dude, you like one of the most talented motherfucking dudes. You funny, blah. Like, you should just really like lay into this shit. And I started really putting some energy into my social media, and now the shit is like it's really fucking popping. You know what I'm saying? Listen, guys, there's nowhere we've gone to. And I'm talking about like, okay, look, it's one thing when you influencing 
people that you never met before. You go to a gas station, you see somebody. You go to a casino, you see somebody. I'm talking about when we see celebrities or OGs in the game. We was at Mr. Chow's. We ran the exhibit, and the exhibit goes, God damn, yo, Craig, your fucking page is fucking crazy, bro. Your shit be wanting me to get a divorce. Yo. Like, your shit is. Like, we're sitting there, and this. if you've been to Mr. Chow's before, I'm sure 95% of you haven't. In BH. In Beverly Hills. There's a, they make the noodles, like the actual noodles, they make them fresh there. And the noodles are slapping, and the noodles are slapping at a noise. And it's it sounds like billionaires like, eating with their families yeah. and shit. And the, the noodles are slapping, like clap, 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 clap. And they're slapping the noodles, and they're making them. If you've ever seen how noodles are made from Italian, Chinese, whatever, they're slapping them loud. Exhibit, it's their anniversary or his wife's Does, birthday. She's sitting at the table next to us. So Exhibit and his wife are having a nice little romantic dinner. And Craig and says, here I come, my Craig bullshit. says, Oh, that shit sound like round two with my house. <laughs> and bro, man, like the type of shit that he posts, you have to understand, listen, my wife, she loves Craig, but at the same time, she it's like, it's, it's a, there's a, you know, she takes it like, in a way, like anyone who's married or in a serious relationship, they gonna get offended with Craig's page. And, and I get it, because he's a guy's guy's page. Yeah. But his page always does so well and everything else. But he's starting to understand now, you can't just take copywritten, pic, you know, photo videos and shit and repost things and blah, blah, whatever. Which is all I hate that part of the game, but yeah. So you know, like Ben has been one of my strongest supporters, obviously, and uh, you know, the Urban Sicko parlay into Urban Sicko now. So now Urban Sicko is becoming this whole new thing. Like that's that's a character of me. It's like me on me up times ten, and it's literally me like doing all the curating. You know, what I'm saying I find all the fucking uh, content, and um, you know, it just started getting so big. So right now we're just starting to push forward. You know, he's gonna be he's got some TV shows coming, he's got some music coming, because obviously I'm a producer and a DJ. So we're bringing Urban Sicko to Vegas. And for anybody who wants to follow us, urban.sicko at uh on Instagram and I just check it out. Ben's been, you know, he was like, yo, man, it's like the new world star, bro. Like your shit is like he just really started pushing it and it's like but the new, the, listen, man, I, people don't know how my, my affiliation with Worldstar, like they don't know how deep I'm in Worldstar and I won't right. get into it, but it's the new, when Worldstar was good, good yeah, and I it's feel like, bad. It's like a new version of that because to me, man, I just like, it's, I've always been a clown. Like when I was five years old, I was in the school play and shit, I was hamming it up. Like I was going off the script. Like it wasn't in the script and I was just like trying to make people laugh. So that's always been a part of me. I, I got a funny bone in my body. I've always been a clown. I was class clown in high school, got kicked out, all that shit. So my, my page is uh, Urban Sickle is just basically another extension of me. It's just another part of my personality. It's another way that I get my creativity out. And, um, you know, it's, it's been fun. It's been a fun ride, man. It's like tomorrow, going back up, getting the shit popping. You know what I'm saying? I'll be doing some posts with Ben, doing some posts with people out here in, uh, in uh, Vegas. We're about to launch Urban Sickle Music. And, um, you know, it's just it's very fun, man. Like, I really enjoy what I'm doing right now. And it's like, like you said, I really never really cared about social media on that level. But this shit is fun, man. Like, if you got a popping page, that shit is fun, man. You know what I'm saying? You already know. Like, me and him, we be on each other's stories and shit, doing dumb shit. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's hilarious, man. It's, it's crazy what's going on in the world right now. Because social media can be, can be a lot of bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, it can be bad for a lot of people. But I feel like we use it cleverly. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we do it the right way. And um, as, as offensive as some of the videos are, Craig still don't like, like he don't go as hard. Like I'll go to somebody, but man, shut your bitch ass up, fuck you. That's really not how Craig is. It's just it's he's he's really reserved, which is which is crazy. But when you see him and, it, and it's a homie and you, you got we're in we're in a closed room and it's just homies, he'll he'll let loose a little different, and that reflects on what's being posted on the page and the jokes that we have and like. Yeah, I hold because the shit that we talk about, there's no way we could talk about that shit in public or any God other forum. There's no my way, phone dude. It's, taken, like, it's this, people are hypersensitive now, you know, and you already know, dude. Everybody's just so fucking sensitive, I'm man. Just you can't about, say like, shit, man. Somehow, some way, I don't know how it happens. Miles, I might have to have you look for a fucking for this video clip of Randy West with like a. <laughs> I think I think he busted a nut for like 57 seconds, like you. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh. That was my favorite shit, yo. If you don't know who Randy West is, then then you motherfuckers ain't OG porn fans. But see, I won't talk to Ben for two weeks, and then he'll send me the Randy West clip, like, at <laughs> four in the morning and shit, when he goes to take a piss and shit. Like, that's the nature of our relationship, you know what I mean? And, and, but and even I, the people we've been around that, like, kind of clean their act up and shit, like... Um, what's the worst... What's your worst story with me, like, the most, like, ridiculous shit? We can't talk about that one on this one. We gotta do it on another one. Oh, you talk about the fuck... Which one when I was... When I was, After you had the shabu shabu, we oh gotta talk about. Oh my god, that's 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 gonna be a separate episode. All right, that's cool. We can get into that later. I mean, there's a few things that we have to say. 
I just um the other day I was at um Topanga Mall. Yeah. And they made the mall really nice. I don't know if you've been there before, in yeah, the last two there. years. Yeah. So now they got Louis Vuitton there. The Valley's never had a mall like that before. They got right. Neiman Marcus and shit, right? So Nicole Richie was there. And okay. she was speaking in the gigantic, like, main part of the mall. And there's all these people there to talk about fashion or make or some shit, whatever. And there's this um, enormous, enormous fashion blog called Who, What, Where. Okay. You know who the fucking founder and CEO of the other is that Catherine is. yeah Cat, yeah, Cat Poo. Poo. <laughs> yo bro yo she used to be at the crib like I had this crib in Claremont all the homies would be out there AM Ian Ben would come out doing fucking donuts in front of my house bumming my neighbors out peeling out in his car I wish I could say a little bit more and speak the way I really I mean there's some things people just they, they, they don't understand so I can't right. speak in certain slang I can't yeah I know but no that area was super dope and Cat and like Ian and fucking Ian was Oh my God, bro! I just want to talk about like I have to. I, I'm gonna have to ask Ian first before I could talk about the, yeah, yeah, that's it. When he when he made the phone call and 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 by accident and the trio yeah. his phone and it was on the whole time. The worst shit ever. And his chick hurt. The worst shit ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, anyways, going on. A lot of people know about the story. Trio. But, but, wow. Remember the fucking trio? That was crazy. So going on. Um, we could go on and on and talk about hip hop, talk about sneakers, and talk about everything else. But it's like, listen, it's real important that you guys understand that. It's like an eight to one or nine to one ratio. There's gonna be a couple young cats that I interview in here and there, and not not saying there's nothing that, that's not interesting about them. It's just they haven't lived enough life and haven't experienced enough life. So when you think about someone like Homicide or Dan or fucking Biggs from Rockefeller or people that I have on the show, they had went through so much adversity, especially as whether you be black or person of color, you could be Asian, Latin. I want you to understand that I'm doing the OGs first so you guys understand where where, the, where my base came from, right. where the genesis started and everything. And like... It's very important, man. No, it is. And, you know, there's a lot about LA that people don't know about. We ain't even scratched the surface on like... Yeah, and you like, know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm planning, I'm planning on like, anytime you need me, let me know because we can cover all those bases, you know, like I'll come into town because a lot of people don't know I'm from LA, but I just moved to Las Vegas like literally this week. So we're in Vegas like now. We literally look at over the city like this... This beautiful view right now. I don't even want to leave this room and shit, but no, nah, view sick. It's, it's, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck it. Because I'm looking at the I'm looking at the clock right now. I, I should I should never look at the clock. It's one of the big things. All the most famous people who make you know um, comedy tapes that do podcasts and stuff. They don't look at the time. Listen, fuck this. We are gonna do this right now. All right, bro. What is your prediction right now with the NFL? NFL, barring injuries, Patriots, uh, Patriots and Cowboys. Wow. Patriots and Cowboys. I don't see anybody. Okay. And you know me and you hate both teams. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But Those are the two hate teams I hate the most. Yeah, but the Cowboys, the, man, Dak is balling. They got yeah, Zeke. They got hella receivers. They got major defense. So let's talk about our teams real quick. What, uh, you, what, you, what you think about What you think about uh, the Raiders? Uh, Raiders are trash. And by the way, Raiders he, are trash. He, 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 he denounced the Raiders. <laughs> and when he finally denounced it, he's never denounced it. He's only talked shit about them for 15 years. I finally gave up seven, eight years ago and jumped with the Seahawks, and it made sense. But when he finally gave up, I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, that was, okay. that's like, that was like me leaving Los Angeles. You know what I'm saying? And I, I tried to— Where do you, you think they're going to go this the, year? The Raiders? Yeah. They're done. Like, they, like Gruden's a wrap. Like, I, 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 don't, I mean, personally, I don't feel Derek Carr is that guy. You know what I'm saying? But for a minute, we thought he yeah, was. He was in 2016, and he got injured. But it, there's just another level how, of— How many games y'all going to win this year? Four. Oh, okay. Four tops. I think it'll be four and twelve. Okay. Because they got they got the hardest schedule in the NFL. Yeah. But they don't have the offense. And How do you feel about? Did you think? Okay. Put it this way: if everything worked out with AB, y'all would have won seven six, games. Six games. Six, oh, six games. They don't okay. have. The, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, AB could have opened up a lot of shit because he, he takes a lot of. Uh, but I, I called it. I said it a million times. I said, bro. He going to fuck something up, and it ain't just going to be right because he just don't get it. He could it. write a new book on how to fuck off everything. Yeah. Like, he fucked off so much shit in two weeks. Like, it's 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 baffling. It's an, it's another level. It's unbelievable. But the Seahawks, uh, I watched that game today. You know I'm going to hit you during the game. Uh, I think the Seahawks. I think we're going to be good, bro. I'm sorry, man. Uh, today was weird, though, man. Like, y'all lost to the Saints without Drew Brees. Like, that hurt. that didn't sit well with me, man. Do you, do you want to know what, why I was mad about the whole situation, right? And I feel like we should start Randall now and whatever. But going on. The tone it set from the special teams football, you know, the return off jump. Yeah. Did you watch that one? Yeah. Touchdown off that, boom, boom. Then we scored, and I was like, all right, we good. You know, Rock, uh, Lockett got in there, boom. Um, what bugged me out was the fumble yeah. with oh. Carson. Oh, yeah. And I was like, wait a second, okay. And we still did our thing, right? And the crazy part was they didn't beat us with offense. 
Yeah, they didn't score. It wasn't offensive, offensive touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got like we, we, special we, teams, yeah. defensive. We we fucked up on our own thing, right? right? Which is weird. And the Hawks do this shit, right? We end up at the pop playoffs every time. We still do our thing, whatever. And I think this was a fluke. And I think we also came in there a little too confident that we was going to do our thing. It was going to be a 3 0 thing. What people don't know about this, well, real football heads do know. They got real defense. Like, th that's why y'all didn't beat them. No, that's for they, sure. Their defense is real as fuck. And no. it's like. They're a good team. And you know what? I rather Dude, they play them in the Super Bowl, like yeah. you know what I mean? Like they real good. And I remember going, you know, playing them, you know, last you know, two, three years ago, Monday Night Football, and we yeah. beat them. It was a big deal. Listen, I think we still got a great squad. We're two and one. And I honestly think, I think we are gonna win ten games this right, year. Serious question. I got one for you. Let's get into the Lakers. Oh my God. All right. So this shit right here, you know, me and Ben is OG like Laker fans from the '80s. Like we are like. Laker, if you don't, if you, if you don't we, know, Laker extremists. If like, you don't know who Wes Matthews is, don't talk to me ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? We are Laker extremists. And me and him was never never LeBron fans. Let's just put that on the record. Me and him was like one of the hardest. Like We used to go at LeBron so motherfucking hard. Like Because I got a lot of LeBron fan homies, you know what I'm saying? So now LeBron comes over to the Lakers. And I'm trying to convince Ben, like, look, man, we need to we need to shelve that shit and just and just at least hope the Lakers will be good. Last year was a fucking disaster. Shit was trash. I, I didn't accept it last year. This yeah. year, I'm ready, ready to accept it. Are you it. cool with it? Yeah. I'm ready to so, accept it. So, and I, this is what I love about Ben. It's, it's like stubborn shit. Like, I had, like, many conversations. Like, yo, man, just drop that shit, man. Like, let's just roll. Like, let's just try to get this, get these wins, try to get back in the game as Lakers. And he was just like, no, nah, I'm cool, man. I don't fuck with that shit, man. Like, he sticks to his guns, man. I have to give it to him. Like he was not, he was not trying to get off that that that. that. I got a fucking email from the front office. Yeah, like he was going down. He's like, "Yo, man, they might make your life kind of hard for you at, at, down yeah. at the Staples Center, bro. You might want to change that tone." But let's talk to D Wade about it. Yeah, and he even said, "Listen, man, you ain't gotta like him." Yeah, he's like, "But you have enough of a voice now to you got to be careful. You say yeah. something, boom. I mean, you know, like motherfuckers is trying to sue me on a regular basis. But yeah. but going on. So look at I met AD." Um, I'm in the NBA 2K game, you know, went to the party, yeah. met dude. Um, People ask me, can you get 2Ks? I'm like, dude, don't ask me about that shit. Hey, can, ben, can Ben give me the 2K with him on it? I'm like, bro, fuck out of here. So, I, you know what, man? I was a big Kuzma fan, and I hope he don't, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, we got a lot of mutual friends. I know Cuz. Well, I know Kuz. <laughs> what do you think, man? I think Kuz is really good, man. I think Kuz is a good at a certain role. He's a great scorer. He's young. He's... It, he has a lot of room to grow, you know what I mean. Um, it's still we still got to see what he's gonna do when shit gets really, really real. You know that's like playoff time because when it comes to defense, like you know, or in the playoffs, they they will expose your weaknesses. That's right. what all good teams do. So I don't know what Kuz is gonna do when it comes to that. But, but did you did you see what what Doc Rivers said last week about about, about how he was gonna move the team to Seattle if that shit didn't happen? If, if, if Kawhi goes to the Lakers, it's, the whole league is a wrap. No, I know. But do you see how that, that the way he they did it, like, yo, we got to do this, this, and did this. Did you see the shit like, came out? This shit, they, they were planning this shit. There was no free agency. Yeah. Kawhi, Doc, all the motherfuckers was in cahoots the whole time. And, and Kawhi, Kawhi was, was coming to the Lakers, and they changed I mean, they changed it up. They got, you know. Well, from what the reports are is uh, uh, Kawhi was always going to the Clippers. He, he, even before that, he had, he had Paul George's people trade him he was going to be traded before free agency. So that whole trade where they made it like they just did it out of the blue, that's bullshit. They were talking this way before free agency. Right. So this it was all planned. And uh, Kawhi told him, said, if y'all don't get Paul George. He said, he said, if you don't get I'm Paul George. I'm going to the Lakers. Yeah. And then the whole league's a fucking wrap. For, like, it would have been like yeah. three or four straight championships for the Lakers. Yeah. So now it's a little different in the city. You know what I'm saying? Me and you are like, yo, fuck the Clippers. Like, I'll never not. I'm always going to say fuck the Clippers, bro. bro. Like, when they were winning for a little bit, you and Dante were like, yo, man. You know, they from L.A., it feels like that. But I was like, no, nah, fuck all that bullshit. Bro, you was trying to have me back them. The, the, the last Clippers game I went to was the one you took me to. No, I know. And, and I, we, I, we I refused to go in there. I, I, dude, every every year people. We almost like, got kicked out of the game. Right. Because we, <laughs> we was going at, uh, at KG and them. We, we was, was right behind everybody. Him. We was right behind him. We was cussing out the uh, the Celtics. Yeah. So Doc Rivers was a coach then, too. That's crazy. Yeah, dude. It was, it was in there. Celtics coach. We was in there. From but, but, like, what I'm getting at is, listen, man, one of my pl favorite players in the NBA is Lou Will. Yeah. Like yeah, I, no, I love lose, this fool, lose, right? Lose, lose the man. I'm so, I, every time I see him at the games, I'm like, yeah, bro, man, I wish he was still on the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? Every, like, <sighs> and he so hits me bad. up. He's like, oh, you know what? You should make me a chain. I'm like, yeah, you should come to the Lakers. Yeah. And I'll make you one for deal. free. Yeah. So what, what you think, man? So right now downstairs in the sports book, Clippers and Lakers are favored. 
Uh, I think the Clippers are going to be favored because they got the continuity. Like, they were together first. You know, the Lakers got to put it together. Um, me, personally, this is my opinion on Kawhi. Kawhi is one of the greatest players in the league, but he's a beneficiary of a lot of shit. Yeah. You know, he played with Tim Duncan. He had Greg Pop. He played with Manu and, and Park, million percent. Parker. He had uh, – who else was on that team? You know what I'm saying? He, those were Hall of Fame dudes. All right? So they win with that team. Then he goes over here, and there's no doubt, Kawhi is a bad dude. But they barely beat the Sixers. The Sixers almost took them out. He hit one that shot. one shot. One shot. And then KD and half of the Warriors go down, and they win. Okay? So that's two beneficial situations. They do not win that championship without KD and them going down. I'm st- I think we all know that. Okay, so, so, now, so now you got – if LeBron is healthy, and anybody who's seen LeBron play in the playoffs the last 10 years, if he's healthy and he got AD – I don't got my money on Paul George. I ain't never seen him really nah. do nothing in the playoffs like Hell that. No. So I'm I'm looking at it like if it gets – it's going to come down to injuries. Like whoever's the healthiest. But I think we both – I don't like the fact that Paul George claimed L.A. this and that he a Laker fan and trying to say he was a Clipper fan. Like that shit don't sit right with me. I got videos of that shit. I'm waiting for – I'll drop yeah. – That shit don't sit right with me. This is my right thing. Me. This is my thing. He's hanging out with YouTubers and shit like, man, get the, the thing fuck about, out The here, thing bro. about that, like Kawhi is from – San Bernardino, Paul's from Palmdale. Yeah. So that those are not cities of Los Angeles. They're yeah. not even in Los Angeles Basin. They're not in Los Angeles County. Okay. So that's cool. But you know, <laughs> the Lakers shit is too deep rooted, man. It's too much culture. It's too much tradition. It's too much winning. The Lakers are the Yankees of LA. No, nah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So it's like telling people that oh, y'all need to get over that shit. Y'all a bunch of sorry motherfuckers. It's like it ain't Shut gonna happen, bro. That's, what I that's said, like though. telling people you you know it's like. But going on, listen, bro. Let me say this, because I had Austin Rivers on my show. And right. The episode was like two, three episodes ago. Houston is so good this year, bro. bro Houston's going to be amazing. The, the whole the whole West, Golden State is still going to be good. No, for sure. Golden State's going to be great. Like, this NBA season is going to be the most competitive we've seen. Like, we all knew Golden State was going to win every time. They but the fucking, East is just, eh. eh. They got the Sixers. They got the Sixers. Yeah. Oh, the, Milwaukee. But Giannis is yeah. All the shit is in the West, dude. Do you know how popping the Staples Center is gonna be when the Clippers yeah. and Lakers? Bro, have you, look, talk. I just went to the new Golden State Warrior Stadium, though. Oh man, Chase Center. Oh my lord, have mercy. No, it's the best. It's the it's the newest. Like they dropped so much money on it. I it's mean, like, bro, you gotta remember, Valley Park in the Staples forever for the longest was most expensive, two hundred, two fifty. Bro, Valley at fucking Chase Chase Center at uh, the Warriors new stadium, four hundred. Yeah. See. I'm good on that. Yeah. <laughs> and so is all the Oakland people because all they real, real, real No, they'll fans. take the BART, dog. They'll take the BART. Traffic's going to be so bad anyway. But I mean, they're, they're, the cats in Oakland ain't paying like for them tickets, man. No, it's you know too what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be all, it's all the be, tech you know, yeah, the tech, tech, tech cats. Yeah, it's like the tech stadium. I don't know what the crowd's going to be like in there. You know what I'm saying? What's the, what's the white boy's name with the, with the receding hairline of Lakers? He, he doing his work. What's his name? He nice, man. Oh, uh, uh, Why the fuck am I forgot his name. I forgot his last name, man. You know what I'm talking about? He be dunking be, and be, shit. Be, begins with a C. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, what? that's terrible. We both real Laker fans don't even fucking. But the, the but team I'm, is. But weird. I'm so yeah. old, bro. I can't remember nobody's name. But I, yeah. I can meet you, and I forget your name like five minutes later. No, I mean like Caruso. Yeah, Caruso's the guy. Yeah, KCP's my my guy too. Uh, it's gonna be good though. It's gonna be good because LeBron and them they're gonna be acting a fool. Like I think AD's a machine, and it just like it, it is. If what it AD is. like if AD plays healthy, dude, they are gonna be fucking people up. Man. Why wouldn't he be healthy though? Because all people have health issues in no, the NBA. No, no, you know, no, Kawhi, no. this is what I'm saying. They, Kawhi and him, they, they can't do all that load management shit. Like, you got to win your games in the in the West. You got to be at least. This you, is my thing. You got to be at least the top four. The last two, three years, Boogie just been disappointed, period. And I know he's a little injury. Good. I get it, bro. You know how much I hate Dwight, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it's like once Boogie went down, the thing about Boogie is. Boogie can score 20 any night. You know, Boogie can pass. Boogie can shoot free throws. Score 30, dog. That's what I'm saying. Boogie can – there's little bitty things that Boogie does that would have translated. Like, he can literally hit free throws. Like, you know how bad the Lakers are at free throws and shit? Even LeBron can't shoot free throws. So, that was a, that was a big fucking drop for us. But Bro, Dwight's if, trash. If, if he is. But if he can play some defense, that's all we can ask for. You know, he because if we can move 80 to the four, 80 don't got to deal with the trees. And AK, nobody can see AD at the four. He will yeah. he'll eat everybody up at the yeah. four. He'll take you off the dribble. He'll dunk on you. I like JaVale, though. Yeah, JaVale, JaVale, yeah, that's your boy. You know, so, I mean, you know, we'll see. The Laker game should be live, though. They should be real live shit. Like, the team is good. You got Danny Green can shoot threes. You got, you know, you got. You the got, Ranger. You got a bunch of twos on there. You know can, what, though? It sucks, though? Avery can get down you know to defense. 
I checked the first fucking Clippers Lakers game. It's the first game of the year. No, you know what the fucking seats are? Thousands. Twenty five bands for floors. Yeah, they gotta be. They could go up even higher, but it's just yeah. like, fuck, dog. Like who? It's gonna be you know you know L A man. man. It's gonna be a bunch. No, of... but I'm saying you know I work out. So I'll figure something out. But so, Dodgers, man. I'm a, you know I mean I'm I'm on I'm on the radio, but I'm gonna just I don't think they're gonna do it, man. I, I don't see the I don't. You do realize if we lose this one, I, I just don't see the pitching. I don't see the pitching. What I'm saying is this though. I think we look better. Okay, look at we should have won the Houston joint. Should have won versus Houston. That's fuck, Kenley fuck, Jansen, fuck, dude. Fuck, no, j- dog. I, and then you Darvish. Fuck, and you Darvish. I will fuck. Listen. The team played well. I will fuck Jansen ass up, first of all. Second of all. He's the worst, bro. When we played against Boston, nobody was beating that team that year. No, they should have swept we, us. We, we, yeah, we didn't incredible. have a chance. But this year, I think, man, you know, we, but Dodgers, Yankees. Listen, I don't know, man. Let dude, me be real. The Houston, I'm telling you, man, the Yankees got to be Houston, if we, though. They if, got, we, if we lose this one, we the Buffalo Bills, fam. We, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, because this is what people be talking. People always bring up the 30 year shit with the Dodgers, like they, like the, like the Cubs didn't, that they didn't have a championship for a hundred years. Yeah, you know Boston, it was a hundred year curse. So fuck all the motherfuckers talking all that 30 year shit. Like this shit's been way longer droughts in baseball than that. But I don't know, man. I just don't know about the pitching. Like Kershaw, he got to give up two or three home runs before he even. But Ryu was doing his thing, man. Yeah, he hit a home run today. Why you hit a home run today? Hit a home run today, bro. I was hung over as a motherfucker today, yeah, bro. He hit a home so. run today. He was like, they was called him Babe fat, Ryu. That motherfucker. It's the Babe Ruth, but... Uh, that fat Korean motherfucker. I yeah, was, so let's wrap okay, it so, up, man. Like, yeah, yeah, no, listen, bro. Listen, I really appreciate you coming down. And yeah, it's I crazy. Do. I'm glad to be here in, in, in Vegas. I'm about to go do, take some more echinacea and some more tea. Yeah, get your shit right. Yo, y'all, listen. We're going to be back with a little bit of outro and everything else. Yo, Miles, hit me with that Lakey beat, please. All right. So, yo, we're back, man. Um, I got to shout out my man, Homicide. Before we do all that, that that beat you hear, that motherfucking jazzy ass shit is by my man, at Lakey Inspired. Yeah, that's one word. At L-A-K-E-Y Inspired. Again, listen, I got to apologize to you guys. I know I've been talking all this shit and my voice is a little bit off. Listen, I talk way more than I used to talk and I already talk a lot as it is. And I was out last night Drinking everything from fucking 92 octane gasoline to fucking 1942. So, you know, I'm all fucked up. Again, big love to my man Homicide. He hates when I call him that, but that's what I know him as. Um, Craig, a.k.a. Urban Psycho. Again, he's the best page on Instagram you may not have heard of. A producer extraordinaire from fucking alcoholics to hip hop to Sugar Ray to you name it. Um, That's my motherfucking brother. Yo, right now I got to get into something real quick that kind of fucked me up because I talked about it before. You know, man, one of my little homies, man, he owns a company that's worth millions and millions of dollars. And, you know, he's just barely in his 20s and he hit me up the other day and he has some issues. He's been going through some stress and depression and anxiety and stuff. And something I want to discuss is that I never really talked about it until last week on Twitter. But since like around 94, 95, I started having anxiety attacks. I never understood what the fuck was going on. I always thought something was wrong with my body. Something was wrong with my health. And I couldn't figure it out. And I started going to see, you know, I went to go see doctors. At a certain point, I thought maybe something was wrong with me. I thought maybe I had cancer. I thought something was wrong with my brain. In fact, at one point, I thought I had AIDS. So, you know, I took an HIV test. And I started seeing this doctor so much that finally he kicked me out of his office. And he was an old dude. His name was Dr. Gold. I'll never forget. And his office was right in Beverly Hills. And he was getting so upset that I was coming in there because I kept, I was a hypochondriac. I thought I had every single possible sickness you could think of. And he was like, listen, man, there's nothing wrong with you. And he would leave. This was back in the day when we, we didn't have cell phones or anything. We had answering machines. You had to actually physically play a cassette. And he was like, nothing is wrong with you. Your HIV test came back negative. Thank fucking God, right? Because, you know, a lot of guys have sucked my dick. I'm joking, baby. Listen, if my wife is listening, I'm fucking playing. So anyways, going on, I had these anxiety attacks. And I don't know what the fuck was wrong with me. And I'd walk around the office. And I think it was at the time I was overwhelmed. And, you know, your mind can play a lot of tricks on you. And if you don't know how to cope or deal with being overwhelmed, and if you don't know how to deal with your mind tripping you out, especially, you know, I did a lot of drugs back in the day. I did mushrooms. I did pills. I did fucking acid and stuff. 
it could really take over your, you know, if you're not headstrong, you know, mind ain't, ain't on point, it could really fuck you up. When you get into depression, you get sad about shit, or you get, you know, you break up, you could fuck around and let your emotions get the best of you, and it can take over. So that's like a real big thing. You guys got to just, like, really take a few deep breaths and just know it's going to be okay. Now, if you're not physically fit, you might be overweight, you might have some other shit, you might have cancer running in your family. You should do the background check of everything else and keep your health in order because there could be something wrong. But if none of that's wrong and you got anxiety and you're tripping, social anxiety, being in a building with too many people, you might be in the car, you might be in traffic. Listen, if you just sit back, take some deep breaths and know it's going to be okay, it will be okay. But on a deeper issue, if you do drugs and you take pills, and when I say pills, I'm talking about opioids, you know, benzos, fucking perks, Vicodins, you know, Xanax and shit like that. That's when you don't understand that you're fucking with something else that will control you. Because you got to remember, I've taken all that stuff. People take Xanax. I take Xanax when I get on the plane because it eases me because I don't like flying. And as much as I fly, you know, you got no choice. So with that said, when you take Xanax, it's supposed to calm you down. It's a drug. It is medicine. It will calm you down. If you take it a lot, just know this. I am telling you this from experience. If you take a lot of Xanax, understand this. You might as well take it for the rest of your fucking life. I don't give a fuck what doctor tells you anything else. I'm going to tell you this right now because my best friend of my life, of my adult life, Jonas Bavakwa, RIP, he passed away. He died off of pills. I had a few other friends have died off of pills. Know this. Rehab can kill you. People don't understand this because they don't know. Some people have very highly addictive personalities. And when you start fucking with pills, understand that when you go to rehab, they give you this, this blocker. So you can take fucking 100 Xanaxes at one time and you won't OD because the thing blocks out the actual medicine that hits the chemical reaction in your brain. And when, you know, it, it helps you get off it. The only thing is when you have a relapse, especially when it's something like oxys or Xanax, it's going to kill you. Understand, if you take more than a bar of Xanax a day after a certain while, you can't just stop taking it. This is so fucking important. I'm telling you this because I'm trying to save your life. And I will tell you this, this is the God honest truth. If you take Xanax and you go cold turkey, you will have a seizure and you will die eventually. You have to wean off it. You got to take maybe a small quarter bar, take a half bar and cut it down just a little bit. But I'm saying this because there's a lot of young people that message me and they get involved in these drugs because they hear this shit in music and it ain't that cool. You know, if you're taking it because you have anxiety, you're taking certain things, there's other medicines, all right? And I'm telling you from experience, you got to really do your research. Some things you can't just stop taking no matter what the doctor will have to tell you. You got to lean off it, wean off it slowly, all right? And it's like, just because you're famous don't mean that shit's going to cure anything. All right, if anything, you know, you could go in depression and everything else, and you don't understand why. Well, let me tell you why. Because you just took a bunch of motherfucking pills, and now you're not taking the pills. No fucking shit. That's why I tell people, listen, alcohol, it's legal, right? Because it's taxable. So you could have fucking 7,000 bottles of fucking tequila, 500 cases of beer in your house, and guess what? The government won't say shit to you because it's taxable and whatever. You could have as much in your house as you want. But weed is still being fucked with and regulated, even though it is legal and it's, recre you know, it's recreational in, in nine states, it's not 50 state federally legal. So anyways, going on, nobody in the history of creation, not since day one has ever died from smoking weed. I smoke weed every single motherfucking day since I was, I don't know how old I started smoking weed when I was 13. So I've been smoking weed for over 30 years. Just know that nobody in history has ever died from smoking weed, not ever. Now, maybe you try to end a sativa strain and that shit made you feel weird and it fucked you, you know, and you had a little anxiety. Okay, I get it. But no one's ever died from smoking weed. Never in history. So, before you start taking all them fucking pharmaceuticals and putting that shit in there, try that flower. It's, it's fucking amazing. Anyways, a lot of people didn't know that shit. And recently I had an anxiety attack and I was like, yo, you know what? It's time for me to get checked up. I'm 30 pounds overweight from my usual walking weight. Um, I'm older, there's a lot going on. I don't know how many of my listeners are even in my age group. I know there's a few out there, but I know that my big age group is that 18 to 30 year old, you know what I'm saying, age group. So 
Regardless, listen, I know not everyone lives in fucking Canada and you get free health care. Get a checkup. You know, girls, same shit. I know I got a lot of female followers. You want to go out there and get a Louis Vuitton bag and won't get a motherfucking pap smear. Listen, go check your shit out and do all that stuff. I'm telling you because I love you guys. And um, listen, this week I'm dropping a crazy huge episode. I got co-founder and COO of Rockefeller Records, Kareem Biggs Burke. He's going to be on the episode on Thursday. The shit's going to be fucking nuts. We talk about Jay-Z career early on, what he thought about Jay-Z, how he, you know, how it was when he signed Kanye West, and just so much shit from Cameron, Dipset, and all this other stuff. I mean, Biggs and me go back 20-something years. He's a legend. Um, yo, I got that Murakami collaboration dropping. I just found out recently that I know we're dropping two different styles. There's six pieces total. There's three in each design. I just found out we only have three for sale because three are already gone and I can't tell the big boss what to do. So if you want to inquire and if you got bread and you already know this is real paper and this is going to go fast, you should try to inquire info at ifnco.com or call the store, Google the motherfucking number. I don't know by heart. I know it's my store, but fuck you. And um, that Murakami shit's going to be crazy. Speaking about that, I head to Tokyo this week. I'm leaving in three days. Shit's going to be so lit. I'm going to be podcasting live from Japan. Yo, man, that was a wrap for the episode. This shit is crazy. I got to thank everyone involved, my producers, the Dust Brothers. That's Jordan Winter and Miles Davis. Listen, always remember, this is not your practice life, okay? Being broke is part of the game. Staying broke, that's some personal shit, all right? I love you guys. God bless. Stay golden. 